Hey, welcome back and today we're going to talk about the for loop. What the for loop does is it solves a problem that we may have seen with other loops and that is a, uh, a variable that is being used to keep track and count number of iterations. So the for loop is specifically designed for that counted iteration, that over and over uh, track of keeping count of how many times is this loop going and to use that to our advantage here. So this is referred to as a counted loop. This is going to create a local scope variable right on the declaration line. So it's going to create a temporary integer and it is an integer and that is what is uh, being held to keep track of the iterations. Okay, it's going to evaluate a test expression. It's a Boolean test expression before executing the code that makes this a pretest loop. Uh, and that test expression is just like the while loop or any other uh, decision structure. It's a Boolean test structure. So it has to be resolved to a Boolean true or false um, before it enters the body of the loop. Okay, and then it's going to iterate the temporary variable after executing the body, uh, body of the code. Now, once this variable, this temporary variable that's been, cr been created, once the loop exits, that variable stays local scope to this loop, meaning that it dies with the loop. So after the loop is done, you don't access that variable that you've created outside of the loop. Okay, so it's very important to keep track of uh, since the way that we're doing this is that the variable will be local scope and not accessible outside of the loop. The for loop has three parts. Okay, part the first is a temporary variable that is initialized and created right away. Then there's the test condition, the Boolean test condition. And then there is the increment or the iteration statement. And this can either increment or it can decrement. Okay, so it can either count up or count down. And I'll show you a few examples of that as well. So the way that this works, so at the start, we have the variable, the temporary variable is created once, so it's only it's only looked at one time. And then the condition is checked. This is the Boolean test condition. Okay. And then after that, we're going to have the conditional iteration code. Okay. So that's the code that is the body of the, the loop here. And then once that loop is done, we will increment or decrement because you can go either way with this. And then once you're done with that, then we go back to the condition again. We don't uh, reinitialize and create a variable again. So that's very important to notice. That's only done one time and then the loop will keep going and going and going uh, as it need be. If it's false, then the uh, iteration code or conditional code is not run and it just skips the loop. And then after that, the uh, counter variable uh, that's, that was initialized and set and used throughout the, uh, the loop is no longer accessible. Check out this really quick uh, for loop example that I have here. This is the syntax of the for loop. The keyword for is used. Then we uh, declare a, uh, an iteration variable that we're going to use throughout the life of this loop. Okay, so we have int i is uh, assigned with the value 0. Then you use a semicolon. Okay, Remember the three parts. This is part 1. That's why there's a semicolon there. So this is one statement, statement two, and statement three. Okay, so we have the variable created. Then we have the Boolean test condition. This is i is less than three. Okay, so this is going to run a total of three times because it starts at zero. So this would go as such. This would be evaluated the first time. Okay, so the variable is created. And then this is evaluated and i is less than three because it's zero. So then the body of the code here, the body of this loop is executed. So this will print hello. So we would see hello one time, then the iteration. And then after the iteration, it goes back to part two, which is i is less than three. Um, well, i now equals 1 because we incremented it. So 1 is less than 3. Yes, it is. So we go ahead and print hello a second time. Then we iterate it. Then we go back to this again. Is uh, 2 less than, less than 3? Yeah, 2 is less than 3. So then we go ahead and print this. Okay, And then we iterate again. Now 
uh, i is equal to three. Is three less than three? No, it's not. So we've printed hello three times, and this is run three times. So this is started at zero and ended at uh, printing three times, and that's because um, zero uh, was was where we started. If we started this at one and we wanted it to stop at three, we would need to have the equal sign as, uh, here as well. So that way, when we evaluate is three less than or equal to three, that would end up being true. So you want to make sure your logic checks out as well. But notice how we did not uh, care or look at the variable uh, initiali initialization through this process at all. So once it creates this, this is step one, it then goes to step two, and then step three is executing the body of the code. Step four is the iteration. Then we go back to two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four, until it's done. And that's the syntax there. So next is that the for loop itself can be manipulated a little bit. It does not have to follow standard convention. And you've seen this with the, or the while loop as well. We've used the while loop, and you can use the while loop exactly like a for loop, and then even add more things in it, like evaluating Booleans and things like that. Uh, you can evaluate other types of integers and uh, um, in, in, uh, other data types, rather. Uh, so you could do a lot of other different things. With the for loop, you can manipulate it a little bit. I want to talk really quickly about that. You can actually omit all of those three parts of the for loop. The three part being creating the variable, evaluating the variable, and iterating the variable. Why would you do that? Well, you might be tracking a variable that was not temporary, so you don't need to actually use the for loop to create a variable. Um, and it's used throughout the rest of your code, so you don't really need the temporary variable. So you can just skip straight to the, uh, the, va the evaluation that's used in that test condition there. Uh, so you can just skip straight to that. Now you still have to leave that part of the section there, uh, so it's very important that you understand that. The other thing that you can do is you can have multiple initializations, but you can only have one test condition, and that's one single test condition. Okay, so you can't have multiple statements. You can't say, I want to evaluate if this is true and this is true. Uh, you simply don't do that. Let me show you what I mean really quickly. Make this a little bit larger. Move this out. Let me go ahead and create a, uh, a integer called sum. I'm going to set this equal to zero. Now I'm going to create a for loop by using uh, the keyword for. Okay, and then I'm going to start my three parts. Part the first is I would normally create a temporary variable, and that variable is uh, traditionally i. So you want to make sure that you follow that tradition, and um, you can you can make this i uh, as as it's a temporary variable, and it's going to be local scope to this loop and die after that. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, you can call this whatever you want, though. You can have it be whatever the heck you want, no problem at all, and uh, that's that's your choice. Uh, tradition is if it's local to the loop and going to die, start with i, and then you can increment from there. It could be i, j, k, l, so I, how many ever that you need, uh, and I'd get I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit later. Just wanted to define that tradition there. Okay, so let's set this up. So let's i is equal to zero, that's part one. i is less than something, and how many times should this run? Uh, I don't know. Let's, um, let's make another variable real quick, and uh, let's make this run times, and let's ask the user how many times should I loop? Okay, we're gonna see in run times. And I, <laughs> I typed runt times. Okay, so then I can evaluate run times and then iterate, iterate run times. Now I'm gonna get to this in a second, this sum, so don't don't uh, don't forget about it or or don't think that I'm deviating uh, here too much. I want to show you just real quick syntax, and then we're going to uh, pull this into play. Okay, and now I'm going to see out here. 
this has run. And we're not we're not in English uh, composition right now, so let's just let's just keep going with this. It says run x of number of times, which is going to be run times. Run times. And because run times, we want to count from whole numbers being um, starting from one. So we want this is this is run one time, not zero times. So we want it to represent one, two, three, four, and so on. It's going to start from zero because i is equal to zero. Now run times is how many times it's going to run total, right? So that's not actually going to give me how many times this is iterated. Plus it's going to print this out every single time. So this is going to run uh, x number of times. If I input this five. This is going to print five times, five times, five times, five times, and that's not what I want, right? So that would be common error number one, is you're tracking the wrong variable. This should actually be i. Now, if I put that other requirement on here as well, I want this to run starting from one, two, three, four. Oh, well, this should start from one, right? And it's not. It's going to start from zero. So let's just aggregate this real quick to to actually uh, start from one, okay? All right, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and run this real quick. Let's say five, and we'll find that this loop runs five times, starting from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, in its evaluation, but we have uh, changed this and modified this to print uh, starting from 1. Still five times that it's running, so we're not actually changing any of that, it's just display format. Okay, so now here comes where the manipulation would come into play. Say if we don't need this, what if we had some variable here, some, okay, we've had some come up and some would be, you know, over um, the, uh, the amount that we should start at, right? So depending on what it is that we had previously in our program, we want to set that as saying wherever sum is at and what the user has uh, chosen, we want to start from there. So maybe it's a, it's a window of how many times this should run. Okay, so to do that, we would have to get rid of the temporary variable, and we would not actually need that. So we would take sum, we would put sum here, and you could say int sum, and you could have that here. Notice how it's not declaring it, it's not doing anything, it's just putting it there. And then you could say sum is less than times run, and then you could uh, increment some. Okay, so changing all my stuff over here, and I've omitted the declaration of a new variable. Okay? So running this, how would this operate? How many times do we want to increment the loop here? Now, this is also going to run five times because sum is zero. If I change sum to, say, three, let's run this again, five, and we run it four and five times, okay? Um, now, <laughs> this uh, display is not actually accurate now um, since uh, it, we, we, it, it should say, according to the way that we've done this, it, we would probably want to amend this so it just says this is only run two times. Um, but just to uh, just to prove the point of where the data is going on this. Now, do we actually need this portion here? Do we actually need to tell it what it is that we're evaluating? No, we don't. So I put that here as a formality, uh, just so that the programmer could see where this is coming from once it's evaluated. Uh, and that it is external and it's not a local scope variable, but you don't actually need it. However, though, what you do need is you do need that semicolon. If I were to remove that semicolon, 
it would break this because this no longer is looking at three parts it's looking at two parts and it thinks that it's missing the third part so by keeping the semicolon in place takes care of that so let me actually get rid of this uh, part of the functionality real quick. Let me take sum as um, the primary variable that we're tracking here. And I'm going to change this down to 5. Okay, And I want to say that um, this program is going to run a series of time. It's going to print out this, uh, this see out statement here. I'm going to show you that you can get rid of the iteration up inside of this declaration as well. Okay, so we've declared a variable outside. I'm going to simply move this down here. And now I've omitted the first part of this, which is the, uh, uh, the variable declaration here. And I've omitted the second part, which is the iteration. Now I have an iteration statement in here. I'm just proving a point that these can be omitted. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run this here. We see that this program has run one, two, three, four, and five times, just as we expected it to. And it is missing the variable uh, declaration, uh, the iteration portions of this here. And now I'm going to show you one other part as well. You can actually omit all three portions of this here. If you omit all three portions, it doesn't know what to evaluate for, and you've just created an infinite loop. Now, although you can omit all three parts of the for loop, I don't know why you would do this as it uh, would <laughs> create this, this issue that you would have and um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's useless, okay? Uh, so I'm, I'm just showing that it can be manipulated, not uh, advocating that you should. Uh, so th those are gonna be two different things, okay? So um, on the, uh, I skipped a slide here, but I don't think the graphic is, is actually going to be loading, um, but this actually was a really cool GIF of how the for loop actually uh, increments. Um, we did that and we showed that on a, um, uh, it, the actual uh, slide before this uh, here where I showed you that this is evaluated one time and then the test expression is evaluated, then goes to the code, iteration, expression, code, iteration, expression, code, and it keeps this until the uh, condition is met and the loop exits. So this is only evaluate, evaluated once. Uh, not sure why it's broken, but uh, we'll, we'll move on. Okay, so let's talk about the next process here, which is a for loop inside of another for loop. And uh, yes, just like you did with the uh, if else statements, the decision statements, you can do the exact same thing with for loops. Now, it's very important that you understand the execution process on nested loops with for loops because they can get pretty tricky really quick. Uh, the short, too long, didn't read version of this is that the inner, the most, the bottom inner loop is going to turn until completion before iterating the outer loop one time. Okay, so here's the execution process. Enter the first loop, okay, which is going to be the outer loop one time. And we then execute the second loop, which is the inner loop. Um, we execute on that until the condition becomes false. Then we continue out to the outer loop. Then the outer loop iterates. Uh, and we evaluate that, that outer loop's condition again. If it's true, then we go into the inner loop again and iterate to um, succession. Okay, so let's look at what that looks like real quick. Um, I went ahead and quickly erased all of the other stuff. Let's make uh, a temporary variable called i. Let's set it to zero. And let's set i is less, uh, excuse me, i is less than five. Do i plus plus. Clean up my formatting here a little bit. Okay. Let's do another uh, loop, and this is going to nest. See how it's for loop and then a for loop within side of a for loop. 
Let's do int, and now um, I'm going to change my variable because I can't have i, right? Because uh, even though that i is local scope to this loop, it's now going to be local scope to this. So let's do uh, uh, j on this. Uh, j is equal to zero. J is less than five as well. This is just for testing purposes. J plus plus. Okay, we have an inner loop now as well. So if I were to now print out C out, and uh, I'm, I'm going to C out what these numbers are, uh, I'm going to go ahead and C out I. Then I'm going to go ahead and see out J. Um, and then in the middle of this, let me let me make a little space here. Uh, let me just make a space and a hyphen. Sure, why not? Okay, and I'm going to put these on the same line. I'm going to need a new line after I iterate. So I'm going to come down here and put an inline statement. And this should work. Okay, so let's look at this mess real quick. So what we've done is we have this inner for loop ticking once. Okay, so this is going to come out uh, with i is equal to zero. So zero is less than five. It's going to enter the conditional code, which actually enters the next for loop. So then this is going to uh, come into play. J is equal to zero. Zero is less than five. Yep. So this is going to go ahead and uh, pull the first D, uh, C out statement, which is I. And then we have a hyphen J. And this is going to run until completion. So that printed out this. 0, 0, 0, um, which is actually 0 and 0, 0 and 1, 0 and 2, 0 and 3, 0 and 4, and then once we hit 4, we then end the line and go out to the next one. Uh, so actually, if I let me clean this up a little bit. Let me put an end line on this. Run that again. The data was running together a little bit. Okay, so now you can actually see it. It's 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4. Then the outer loop, okay, the outer loop ticks once. Okay, so it goes from being the outer loop being 0 to the outer loop now is 1. And then the inner loop runs until succession. So this is 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4. Then iterate, 2, uh, 0, 2, 1, 2, 3, 2, 4. Iterate, and it goes until it reaches 4. So as soon as it hits 4, 4, then both inner loop and outer loop have run to succession, and the loop is done. So why did I do this uh, specific example here? It's very easy to see the inner loop at work. The inner loop is going to run the amount of times uh, that that is uh, displayed here. Okay, so that's going to run that many times per time that this is here. So you see that this ran uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, which is five times, right? So this is the case here is five. So normally, without having another for loop attached to this, this would run five times. But since this is going to run five times per one time here, this is now run 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 times. Because it's uh, five times here and five times here. Okay, So that's a relationship between nested loops. Now, if this got even, even nastier, uh, you could also have another for loop inside of this. There's no limit to this. Um, you just need to make sure that you keep track of all of your variables. Okay, so if I have int k is equal to 0, k is less than 5, k plus plus, 
And we're going to have our curly braces here. And thank you automatically for formatting that. There we go. And now let's do this process again. Okay, let's have that. And let's pop K in here. So now we're going to have I, J, and K. Let's go ahead and run that. It's going to be much longer. So now you see that it's running five times on the most inner loop for every one time that the parent's loop runs. And this will run five times per parent loop here. So you see 000, 001, 002, 003, 004, and then it ticks over to one on the uh, parent loop. That ticks all the way over until we hit one on the most outer loop. Okay, so the most inner loop will run into succession first, and then the outer loop will tick one, and they will all go in that order until uh, the outer loop finally breaks the condition and then it exits. Okay, so that's, uh, that's what's going on there. Okay, so now what I want to show you is I want to show you a real quick mock program. Let's do a sales capture program as I really want to emphasize the local scope portions uh, of this here in having uh, a couple of assignments on the same line. So let me uh, show this uh, to you real quick. Let's make a for loop. Initialize uh, int i is equal to zero. I is less than, uh, let's say, five times. We're going to do a, a sales program for a work week, work week being five days, Monday through Friday. Okay, And then we're going to iterate I. OK, let's tell the user what it is we're doing. Enter sales. For each uh, for the week. How about that? Okay, we have I zero, I less than five, I plus plus. Here we go. Let's go ahead and uh, start tracking uh, this sales. I'm going to have a uh, variable out here called total sales and this is going to get into and I need to set this equal to zero um, Actually, let me do this. Let me not set this equal to zero and let me show you a common error that might happen Yeah, let me do that Okay, so what I'm going to do now is this is going to be an example of having assignment multiple assignment here on this line, the first part of this here. It's also going to show you accumulation and keeping a running total within a for loop. Again, because this is local scope, anything inside of this loop here, uh, once it's outside, it better have a reference outside of it and not inside the loop. Otherwise, it will live and die with the loop. Okay, and we will be referencing something that no longer exists. And that's not good. Okay, so let's do this here. Let's see out enter sales big uh, amount uh, for day. And let's do I plus one. Uh, yeah, let's do it that way. Okay, we're going to need to see in something, but what do we see in? It's going to be the sales figures, right? Now, problem. Can we do this? Double sales is equal to 0, 0. .0. And then see in sales. Well, we got a build error. Now, we're going to have a build error for uh, another reason here. Um, let me let me key you in uh, to this here. Uh, the first build there that we have is double. Okay, this type double is unexpected. Okay, 
Next thing that we it's having an issue with is uh, everything else past that because we have double. Let me change this to int real quick, okay? And if I change this to int, notice the other problem that we have is we have data type, data type that does not follow the way that we do multiple assignment, right? So if we have int, um, int i, and then we have int j. That doesn't work, right? Because it doesn't work, we don't tell it what data type it is if we're just having it be a continuation of that single line, right? We can do multiple assignment. We just have to make sure that we don't, we don't, we don't need the data type there. It's redundant at that point. We know what type we're talking about um, because there's a, that comma there to say, hey, this is a continuation of that data type, okay? So another common issue that I see. So we do that. Let's recompile here. We're fine. Okay, we actually get through this. Okay, so this sales, sales now is being treated as an integer. So it doesn't actually track the precision that's here. Now, this may be something that you don't want. Okay, and that's, that's fine. And I would totally agree with you that that's something that you don't want. All right, you might be wanting to use a double for this here. All right, for this type of type of program here, we're dealing with sales. Sales has precision onto it. Let's pretend for a second that we don't need that. I wanted to just highlight a few uh, problems with this based off of ways that I see students naturally approach these uh, types of things. Okay, so now we'll say we have the sales and we need to set those sales after we grab each sale, we need to set that into our accumulator here, which is our total sales. We'll say total sales, okay, plus equals sales. Okay, and here's our next build error that we have. Now, I told you we'd have another build error um, uh, on this, and I'll tell you why right now. So uh, I don't I don't actually know. Let's let's make sure that uh, I'm not sure. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So what this uh, build error is saying is that it's saying that we have an uninitialized variable that's being used. Now I've told you that it's a good practice to initialize your variables, right? And some some of you may be doing this. Some of you may not be doing this. And the reason why is because oh, at some point you have that being set to. A, uh, a value. Well, with this type of programming at the level that we're at, if we do not have something um, or we have a possibility of a variable not getting assigned a value, it will throw a compiler error. So in this case here, what's happening is that we are relying on this statement right here to give this a value. Otherwise, it's uninitialized, right? And um, by removing, uh, I know I started out and I typed uh, is assigned with zero at the beginning, and then I removed it because I said I want to show you guys the next error. This for loop has a possibility of not even running. Again, it's, it's a condition. If I was to be greater than five, it would simply skip. Sorry there, I just <laughs> I hit a key. Um, it would simply skip this entire for loop and then just go to the bottom of the for loop and then execute everything after that. So there's a possibility that this could be completely ignored, which would never see this statement here. So if we were to get rid of that possibility by initializing it in the first place, totally gets rid of that error because now no matter what, it has a value. And the compiler is now going to be happy and we're happy and we can continue on. Okay, so again, we're, st we're using this program as kind of our sandbox here. We're getting out all of the uh, com most common errors that uh, I usually see uh, with using this loop, uh, just so that we, we know about these and we watch for these pitfalls. Okay, enter sales for the week, enter the sales amount for day one. Let's say we did um, 50 bucks, okay? Did 50 bucks. Day two, we did 23 bucks. Day three, uh, 10 bucks. Day four, 300 bucks would finish strong. Day five, uh, we did 
another 10 bucks. Okay, so we kind of finished strong here. Got a pretty good amount at towards the end. All right, and oh, we didn't print, we didn't, we did all that, and we didn't even print out the total sales. Let's print out the total sales. The total sales are. Or we should say the sales total. Okay. Let's run this again. Let's do 10, 2, 14, 15. Okay, so we said that we did $675 in sales. So total sales is accumulating every single time because this is being overwritten. Every single time it's being overwritten with a new value. So we're storing that value into our uh, honey pot, which is uh, total sales. Total sales has reference here because it exists outside of the for loop. Okay, if we try to do this here, We're going to get a build error. There's our build error saying that this does not exist. It's undefined. And the reason why it's undefined is because it was created and dies inside of this for loop. It's local scope to this for loop. Okay, so it does not exist. Now you're probably thinking that why did we even do this to begin with? Because this should be a double. Everything should be double. We're talking about money here. I absolutely agree with you. I'm on your side with that. I'm just showing you pitfalls with um, the way that some people may approach these here based off of uh, what you can do. And what you can do is not what you should do. So that's just uh, some food for thought there. So let's change this if we were to actually approach this problem properly. Let's change this to a, a proper declaration here and we'll have total sales and then we'll have sales and we'll set this also equal to a starting value just to be sure. Okay, we have I is equal to zero, I is less than five for the work week, I plus plus, C in sales, total sales, sales, here we go. And let's add another thing as well. Let's add the ability, uh, include IO manip, Let's include the ability to format this properly as well. We only need one C out sta uh, statement here to set the precision. We want to have this be fixed notation. Okay, so we have fixed notation. Then we're going to set uh, precision. Okay, and we're going to set that to uh, two. So we have fixed set precision. Anything else that we need on this? Can you think of anything else? We do fixed set precision. Well, no, that's that's okay. With this here, set precision, um, we'll set it so that we only read two uh, decimal points. Fixed notation will be uh, on the right hand most side. So this is actually all that we need. We only need the statement one time and everything after uh, the statement here is going to be formatted uh, in that, um, uh, in that uh, portion here. So, um, to answer your question, because you might be uh, you might be wondering, what else could we have here? What is the other keyword that we have um, besides fix and set precision that shows leading zeros? And that's show point. Okay, so that's show point. So you can very well add show point in here. However, though, this is going to take precedence here. Set precision will take precedence as that is uh, going to override and show two decimal points no matter if they are zeros or not. So um, that's just something to look out for. Um, and not wrong, not wrong if you include it, perfectly fine. So let's do this here, just as it sits. Sales for uh, the amount of day one, let's say it was $50.00. Okay, day two is 45.45. Day three is going to be uh, $12.33. And day four, um, 86.00. 
day five, seventy three dot four zero. So now we have a properly formatted program and we have a total that now uh, uh, accounts for precision. There it is, and hopefully this has been informative for you guys to avoid some pitfalls and to watch out um, when using uh, the for loop to overcome some of these problems here. Um, let me know if there's anything that was unclear or if you are experiencing a problem that you can't figure out where it's coming from. Uh, check the uh, discussion board uh, and we'll, we'll get that resolved. So thanks guys and good luck with your assignments.